Again, please welcome Carlos Jimenez. Someday, when I'm awfully low and the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. Yes, your love. Your smile so warm And your cheeks so soft There is nothing for me But to love you And the way you look tonight With each word Breathless charm, won't you please arrange it? Cause I love you just the way you look tonight. have always captured public interest, and Arizona had its first share of female felons. Eva Dugan. Eva was a woman with a scandalous history. Her trial and the sensation her fame caused was short-lived. Now Eva's merely a footnote in Arizona history. Newer, more sensational crime stories have taken the spotlight, but just for a moment, let's go back to 1930 and take a glimpse into Eva's life and death. I woke with a jolt, uncertain where I was or how I got there. Looking around, there was no one else on this train, a train I didn't remember getting on, and for the life of me, I didn't know where I was going. I wanted to check my ticket, but my pocketbook was missing. I caught my reflection in the glass of the window, I was wearing a beautiful beaded evening dress, much too fine for travel. I must have been at a party. Nowhere. Last stop. 
I made my way to the exit and got off the train. And that's how I ended up here, alone on this platform. <laughs> Look who it is. The notorious Eva Dugan. Didn't expect to see you here. Do I know you? Hell, woman. You don't recognize me? What are you talking about? Always the liar. Wait a second. You're that miserable chicken plucker. I was. Was? You still seem miserable to me. You never were very smart. I don't have time to be bothered by you. Don't have time. All we have here is time. You'll find out soon enough. What do you mean? Where are you going? Come back here. I'm not done talking to you. <sighs> Eva! Eva! Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Boy, are you a sight for sore eyes. What a dress. So fancy. Did you make it? Oh, you look like a flapper. <laughs> you always were one for the latest styles. Pearl, is that you? I never thought I'd see you again. Can we go someplace? I I'm a little out of sorts right now. That's right. I was so excited to see you. I forgot it's your first day. Oh, this all has to be a shock to you. Come on, I know a place. We can have a drink and catch up on old times. <sighs> Two whiskeys on the house. Oh, Eva, do you remember all the fun we had in the Yukon? All those men eager to spend their gold on female companionship. Boy, did we all love to hear you sing. You'd get on stage and there'd be all that hooting and hollering and woohoo! <laughs> you were the queen of the Klondike. <laughs> oh, 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 go on. You'll give me a swollen head. I recall you being pretty popular yourself. How many bottles of champagne do you think we drank back then? Those were wild times. That's for sure. If we'd only known the gold rush would end so soon. Once the money dried up, the men got mean. You know, Eva, things got really tough after you left. Yeah, I heard it got bad. I'm so sorry I didn't keep in touch, but I never was very good at letter writing. I missed you so much. I wish I was more like you. Nobody ever pushed you around. You always stood up for yourself. Pearl, you are so sweet. You don't have a mean bone in your body. Yeah, nobody picked on me, that's for sure. But tell me, what happened to you? Well, when the gold was gone, most folks hightailed it out of there. I was stuck for lack of funds. I was doing my best, but the men who remained were not of a generous nature. <laughs> I understand. Nothing worse than a stingy man. Ain't that the truth? Well, one night I was with this fella, and after he fell asleep, I started going through his pants pockets. I was only going to take some change, but he caught me. Oh, no. What did he do? He shot me. What? <laughs> oh, you poor thing. You didn't deserve that. But you're okay now. You're here. Say... See who else is here? Look over there, at the corner of the bar. Do you see those men playing cards? Those look like my late husbands. <laughs> That's because they are your late husbands. Oh, oh, no, Pearl, I gotta go. No, 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 sit. Finish your drink. Oh, they know you killed them. But accept it. And they know it was their time. I must be dreaming. No, it's not a dream. Do you remember anything that happened before you got on the train? Well, I was at home. No, no, it wasn't exactly home. It was a prison cell in Florence, Arizona. We were, we were having a party. Big boy, he's a reporter friend of mine. He brought me cigarettes. We were playing cards and drinking orangeade, and everybody was being really nice to me. But I was waiting for the governor to call. Why was he supposed to call? You see, they told me they don't execute women, and the warden told them I was insane, so the governor was supposed to call. Eva, did he call? 
No, Pearl, he never did. Mm. So then what happened? Well, they were going to hang me in the morning, but if they hung me, then that would mean... That's right. But, but wait, so you died in the shooting? I, I know my husbands are dead, but if we're all dead, certainly I don't belong here with you. I've done so many bad things. I must be in the wrong place. No, <laughs> you are where you belong. <laughs> Evening, Eva. You have a visitor at the end of the bar who's been waiting all day for you. Mama, what brings you to nowhere? When I got word that you arrived here last winter, I thought I'd pay you a call. I see you came to a no good end. It's good to see you too, Mama. But honestly, <coughs> what did you expect? We did the best we could by you. I suppose so, but I've always wondered, why didn't you stop me from getting married so young? Stop you? There was no stopping you. Once you made up your mind to do something, we thought we were doing the right thing by you. Sixteen is young to be married, but you were so wild and stubborn, I thought marriage would settle you down. The least you could have done was let me come home when he left me. And disturb my peace and quiet? No, you made your bed. Mama, I can barely read and write. How was I supposed to support myself and two kids? You did such fine needlework. You could have earned your living that way instead of, you know. Oh, Mama, men pay more for, uh you know, than embroidered handkerchiefs. You can't blame me. You always did what you wanted to do, one way or another. Here you are, back to your old ways. Do you have to judge me, even here, Mama? Look at how you're dressed. No decent woman would be caught dead in that thing. Well, being as I am dead, it seems totally appropriate. For your information, it's a jazz dress, Mama, and I made it myself. It sure looks garish. All those beads and flowers. It's like me, Mama. One of a kind. Flashy and cheap is more like it. Oh, do we really have to do this? I'm just sure my opinion is all. But why is your opinion always so hateful? You're just being dramatic. It's always been that way with you. If you had listened to me more, you wouldn't have wound up in this place. Mama, I'm happy here. All these people here, they like me. They're real me. The loud, brassy Eva, not some phony, baloney do-gooder. Is that how you see me? No, Mama. I see you as a woman who did the best she could, trying to find her place in the world. My place was just different. Did you know Daddy sent me $50 to help pay for my burial? He always had a soft spot for you. He's a good man. I can't wait to see him again. I'm surprised he hasn't made it yet. How are your kids? They're doing good, way better than expected. I was visiting with my daughter when I got arrested. She's married now. She sent me a telegram when I was in prison. She said she was going to pray for me. I thought that was really nice of her, all things considered. Well, despite everything, you are still her mother. Look, Mama, you don't belong here. A lady like you should not be seen in a tavern. It was nice of you to stop by. I'm sure another train will be coming by soon. Let me walk you back to the station. Well, I thought I should check on you. But you're right. This isn't the place for me. I best get going. It was good to see you, though. And if any of this is my fault, I'm sorry. It's okay, Mama, but we better get going. I don't want you to miss your train. What happened to your guest? Never mind that. She needed to be elsewhere. Get me another drink so I can get back to beating my exes at Canasta. <laughs> well, some women never change. Big boy, is that you? Let me buy you a drink. It's uh, good to see you, Eva. Uh, you look really good. Oh, thanks, fella. You sure know how to turn a girl's head. <laughs> that was 
Glad to see you haven't lost your sense of humor. Well, what's so funny? Well, you joking about me turning your head, especially under the uh, circumstances. What are you talking about? You remember the hanging? Huh, mercifully, no. I remember going up the steps, and I told the guards not to hold me so tight. I didn't want folks thinking I was scared. Well, things didn't go as planned. The executioner miscalculated the drop, and, well, there's no delicate way to say this. Your head snapped off. What? <laughs> I should have killed myself. I had everything ready, poison and razor blades. Well, why didn't you go through with it? Well, I wanted to be remembered as a good sport, not a sore loser. <laughs> well, you were a good sport in my all-time best story. You were hot news for a while. Yeah, I know. That's why I charged all you reporters for interviews. What'd you do with all the money? I used it for my funeral expenses. I didn't want a state-issued coffin. I wanted to go in style. Well, you certainly did. Did you know on account of you, Arizona stopped executions by hanging? No, I, I didn't know that. So, I guess I'm famous. The news is fickle, Eva. Everyone moved on to the next big story. Now, what happened to that drink you mentioned? Eva, look who it is. Old man Mathis, I haven't seen you since I first arrived. <laughs> you didn't recognize me then. You'd think you'd remember the man you tried to kill more than once. Jeez, it was just one time. First, you tried to poison me. I didn't poison you. You got sick because you were too cheap to buy decent food. I only poison men I'm married to, and we were not married. You were taking advantage of the situation. I suppose from your point of view I was. I was just being practical. Ever hear the old saying, why buy the cow when the milk is free? See, that's why I clobbered you. Sorry about that. I guess I could have been nicer. Yeah, you could have, but... No hard feelings. <clears throat> Eva, we received a letter for you. A letter? Yes. Looks like a court summons. Another drink? Let me see what it says first. <laughs> You'll never guess who I meant to meet at the train station tomorrow. I see. What the? How can this be? Eva Dugan? Surprised to see me? Wait till you see who else is here. But, but how can you be here? You're... Dead, I know. You look real sharp. They put you in a nice suit. Thanks. It's my funeral suit. But I'm in no mood for practical jokes. I, I just lost my bearings for a bit. It, it happens to me sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll just sit here and tell... You certainly are dressed for a funeral, only you were the guest of honor. I must be dreaming. This is all a bad dream. I'll just wake up and I'll be home in bed. Look, everyone has a hard time at first, but it's really great here. There's no jealousy or hate, no guilt. No, this can't be. There's been a mistake, a terrible mistake. I'm not dead, and if I were, I certainly wouldn't be here with you. What's that supposed to mean? Well, after what you did, you don't belong here. Really? You're only here because of me. What are you talking about? I forgave you. You forgave me? That's rich. The last time we met, you killed me. And what a mess you made out of it. I was carrying out my duty. I built and designed the scaffold. It had worked perfectly before, only... Only this time it was a woman. You just assumed that hanging a woman would work exactly like hanging a man. Well, you committed a crime just like a man, so you deserved a man's punishment. I never said I didn't deserve to die. I'm just saying you did a lousy job. Well, I didn't mean for it to go that way. You know, it doesn't look like it went too badly for you. <laughs> Your head is back where it belongs. <laughs> 
Yeah, it would sure slow down my drinking if I had to carry my head around in a hat box. Wait a minute, there's drinking here? Sure is. And singing, and dancing, and gambling. Well, shouldn't there be a harp playing and hymns and such? If that's what you want, you can get back on the train. Hold on a minute, I just got here. So, tell me, what happens next? Let's go across the street and get you settled in. I think you are going to like nowhere. Eva Dugan is played by Jeannie Colder. Joanne Fox played Pearl. Matt Madonna was Old Man Mathis. The bartender was voiced by Terry Turner. The role of Mama was played by Faith McAvoy. Bill Alwyn was Big Boy, the reporter. And the executioner was Keith Seaman. Rod Gibson was our sound effects artiste. And our audio technician was Maji Swain. I'm your announcer, Ralph Swain.